Well, the last time we got together for an actual review, we went gigantic. We went enormous. We went titanic with the Kingdom Arc. Well, today we're going to do exactly the opposite. We're going to go very small with not one, but two bots when we look at the world's smallest transforming Dinobots, specifically Commander and Flamethrower. Yeah, that's the name, Flamethrower. We, of course, as Transformers fans, know them better as G1 Grimlock and Slag. Both of these guys will be our focus this time around in the latest GotBot True Review. Hey one, hey all, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, your most humble of hosts, Dennis Moulton, aka Gotbot. As always, man, please like, comment, share, of course, subscribe, and while you're at it, light them up, baby. Hit that notification bell, please. It helps me out a ton. It lets you know when content of all sorts goes up here on the channel. Check out Machinery of Man, The Everything Factor. All the groups that I'm either a mod or an admin for, as well as all of my social media links. All of that's in the description down below. If you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. You can check us out on Patreon. You can see what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, you can hit the join button right here on YouTube to become a channel member, baby. And this is, yeah... Basically, it's a G1 Grimlock and a G1 uh, Slag. These are on loan to me by friend of the channel, Maximal Tan. We're going to take a look at both of them, and we're going to take a look at them next to their Studio Series 86 counterparts. How good are these little world's smallest transforming guys? Well, we're about to find out when we head over to the table and take a closer look at both of them. And so the last time we got together, we'd done something huge by way of the Titan Class Kingdom arc, and today we're doing something big tiny by way of the Just Toys World's Smallest Transforming Dinobots. This of course is the World's Smallest Transforming uh, Grimlock and Slag or if you prefer the, uh, the name he's been given like in the modern era, Slog for those who, who, who don't know his original name. Though if you've ever watched any of the Dinobot episodes of G1 then you should know the guy's proper name. We're going to take a look at these uh, at these boxes first and we'll do them one at a time very quickly. And on the packaging we have, of course, on the front, of, like a cartoony type of picture of Grimlock. Speaking of which, on the side, you have comparisons of the cartoon and, um, you know, what we have in the package. Same over here. And then on the back we have the product images. This secret, whatever this secret thing is, I, I'm not really sure what that is. Um, I, I guess it may, it's because it turns into a dinosaur. You'd never know it's a robot. And we have stats. Not gonna lie, kind of feel like a 7 for intelligence is being pretty generous with Grimlock. Of course, he was more intelligent in the comic books, and maybe that's what they're going for. But that's kind of it for the packaging of Grimlock. Whereas Grimlock is being given the name Commander, our buddy Slag here is given the name Flamethrower. And you can see, again, we have nice images on the front. It is nice artwork. On the side, we have a comparison of the artwork to what we get in the box. Same over here, comparison of the artwork to what we get in the box. By the way, on the bottom, there's just like, you know, warnings and all that sort of stuff. And on the top, it's just the same artwork that's on the front of the box. That's the same for Grimlock, too, honestly. Like, what you see on the front of the box is the same artwork you get on the top. And then, of course, on the back, again, we have the product images. And we have the stats. I think the stats for this guy are more accurate. Like, with Grimlock... I think, you know, like the 10 for endurance and skill and strength and courage, I get all that, even his rank being 9 and the firepower being up there, but I don't know, I just thought the intelligence of 7 was kind of high. For this guy, I feel like everything is pretty much accurate. Again, that's it for what's outside. Inside both of these we have a clamshell. And a package, here are the two clamshells, and as you can see they come with like instructions and cards and that sort of stuff, so we're going to look at one at a time and we're going to kick things off with the big boy Grimlock first. Grimlock has this set of stickers, I don't know if they came with it or not, I think it is, it says WST Dinobot on it, so I suppose this came with it, these are not applied, uh, both of these are on loan to me by Maximal 10, so I guess Maximal 10 just didn't want to put the stickers on. And we have everyone's favorite, the ever-popular collector card. And on the back of said collector card, which is very glossy, by the way, we have this nice artwork with the Dinobots, and we have all of the stats down bottom. We got ourselves a set of instructions. They look very G1-ish. 
this tiny but beautifully molded double barrel blaster for him. And maybe the most powerful chrome sword I've ever seen. Powerful sword, move over He-Man. And yes indeed we have a teeny tiny G1 styled Grimlock. Um, to be fair, I did transform this guy once and in transforming him back into dinosaur mode, I found that I couldn't really snap the head back down in place where this isn't mine and I do not want to break it. I didn't force it, but it, by rights it's supposed to snap down there and I assume it does, it's just I didn't want to force it. In this mode, the jaw does open and close just a little bit. Of course, this is hyper G1 accurate. Um, the little dinosaur arms can go up and, well, they can go around basically. The legs can go forward, they can go back. Um, there is like a knee, we'll call it, which is the elbow of robot mode, so, you know, and Generally, like, he stands pretty well. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a neat little Grimlock. If you want a size comparison, here he is next to Studio Series 86 Grimlock, and there's a lot of homages in 86 Grimlock that harken back to G1, which this little guy is a version of, technically. But yeah, you can see the size here. The guy is tiny, man. As for the transformation, it is exactly what you would expect. We have... By the way, can this come out on his back, I wonder? Um, I don't... I don't think this can come out on his back. Maybe it can. I'm not going to force it, but I can't seem to get it out now. Maybe it's just a tight tolerance. The head, as you would expect, it falls all the way back. The tail, it does split. and come out to the side. We can fold down a leg and fold down another leg. We can open, or we should be able to, open the chest. So it comes out to the side and reveals Grimlock's head. And then this whole piece should angle up and we push in the arm to reveal his hand and push in the arm or leg if you will to reveal his hand and we are almost there like G1. The only thing left to do is get the hips out on the side like that and out on this side and down like that and then really get his sword and his blaster in his hands, but basically, boom, here we have Grimlock in his robot mode. And yes, indeed, here we do have the robot mode. It looks glorious. It looks super G1. I can get the blaster in his hand. I really can't get the sword in there. And I don't want it to push it where this isn't mine and belongs to Maximal 10. I really don't want to push it. In terms of articulation, uh, the guy has an arm that's able to move around. He has a knee. Uh, that, you know, goes pretty deep, obviously, because it folds up for transformation. But the most interesting thing, and I think it's different from G1, is that we actually have this little, like, hip wiggle forward and back. It's not much, but it does help when trying to, like, balance him and solidify him into position. So, pretty great little rendition of G1 Grimlock, but, of course, he's not alone. We also have his Dinobot partner to look at. That, of course, is Slug, or his partner, Flamethrower. And again, on the back, the exact same artwork on this high-gloss paper. And we have our um, stats down here once again. Like I said before, I think these are pretty accurate. Another set of stickers for our boy here that were not applied. A set of those g one type instructions. A delicious chromy style blaster. Gorgeous chromy sword. And while I doubt you can make it out, this is one of two little tiny fists. And this is our boy in dino mode with his big brother, if you will, the Studio Series 86 version of uh, Slag. And yeah, again, he's pretty tiny. Tons of chrome on this guy. Now, if you can believe it, this guy actually intrigues me a little bit more than even Grimlock does because I've never in my life even held a G1 slag. So this is like my first time kind of experiencing this G1 transformation for this guy. What I can say is that 
All indications are, much like the Studio Series 86 Grimlock, harkens a lot back to the G1, I feel like the Studio Series 86 Sludge, uh, not Sludge, uh, Slag, harkens back a lot to this guy. Certainly not the same, but a lot of things. In this mode, the jaw can open and close. These horns, the two chromy ones, they can move. The front legs are pretty static, or if they move, I, I can't really get them to move. The back legs can move. And there's even like a little bit of a knee because of the transformation, really. So, neat little dinosaur mode. Like, I, I dig this. I like it. We begin by, if we're following the instructions, picking the sides up. It, much like Studio Series 86, the, the trick to this G1 guy seems to be those side pieces. So, once we have the side pieces up, we can kind of put his... But we'll say his back feet in and then we have to pull his legs out. Now that's where things get a little hairy here for me. Uh, oh, we can also put down his lower jaw to be his dino chest. We do that and we fold that up and in. Now it says to kind of pull these legs apart. My legs don't... Like only one side seems to come out, the other side doesn't seem to want to come out. And again, because this isn't mine, I really don't want to like pull on it too much. So I do tend to kind of fold it um, down and around pretty delicately. I've been taking this armature down here out of the way and then I'll slowly start. Maybe it's this one first. Maybe it's this one first. I'll slowly start to get a leg down. It's a bit of finesse to do this, so I'm actually going to get the legs folded down off camera and then we'll see him, uh, you know, pretty much finished. Now, if you are familiar with the G1 version of this guy, then you might be wondering about what I had as like a bit of a hairy, I don't want to say issue, but where this is small, something to be careful of when folding the legs. So there's a Two things to note. One, I don't find the hips pull out as far as they probably should, and I don't want to kind of force it. But two, there's a hinge like way up in here in the body, and it's pinned so tight that it really only wiggles. I feel like it's supposed to be able to move up a bit more there to get out of the way to fold down the legs, but it doesn't really do it, and I don't want to push it, because if you position the tail just right, you can still get the clearance. It's not a big deal. It's just, it's one of those things like, eh, I'd rather not push it. Then we have, finally, two holes like right here and that's where the hand pegs in and then the other hand over here will peg in that way. Um, I think I might have this one actually pegged in incorrectly. <laughs> I, think I, I think I pegged that one in sideways and they have a couple of little like holes on the top of the hands that presumably can take his sword and his blaster. Here are the two tiny lads all together and it looks good. Fun fact, I can't put the sword nor the blaster in Slag's hands and I'm not pushing it at all, especially where they are chrome. I can't get them to fit in at all. I, they're neat and as far as the articulation goes on, on Slag, like his arms go all the way around and he has a knee. That's it. And finally, here we can see the big bots with the small bots, and you can see the comparison. I mean, in terms of scores, I, the world's smallest ones are quintessentially G1, tens, you know? In terms of articulation, three, four, I mean, it's G1 articulation. The transformation, ten. I mean, it's the go-to transformation for, dino, for Dinobots, and it's even the ones that inspire the transformation in Studio Series 86. They would really get the same scores as the G1 guys, because in essence, that's what they are. A uh, great little set. If you're into the world's smallest Transformers, these are two great ones to get. They look great. They function well. They are nice Dinobots. And here we are once again, and here they are. First, Grimlock. Um, it very much feels like G1 Grimlock. Now, obviously, it's smaller. It's more slight. It it kind of feels more delicate, but that makes sense because of the small size. So I would suggest if you have it to either leave it uh, in box or leave it displayed in one mode, or if you're going to transform it, be delicate with it. It's fine. It's great. I mean, it's basically G1, but it's definitely something where you kind of want to use kid gloves, so to speak. Then we have 
uh, Slag here, who I don't feel like is quite as successful as Grimlock. He's fine, he's great, but he feels a little more fragile to me. Like, where I have a questionable success pulling those legs out, um, where that hinge on the tail doesn't seem like it wants to move. Like, there's a couple of things that I did with this guy where I felt like, okay, I have to get, like, a foot past the, his tail or whatever, and it felt... A little scary doing so. I didn't want to push tolerances and things. Maybe I could have, but where it's not mine, I didn't want to do it. If you like G1 Dinobots, these are probably going to be up your alley. If you like Tiny Transformers, these are probably going to be up your alley. If you don't like Dinobots, you don't like G1, and you don't like Tiny Transformers, then they won't be up your alley. I think they're generally successful, and I think they're fun, I think they're quirky, and they definitely could fit in a nice Legends-ish collection. They're not going to be for everyone, but they are neat for what they are. I appreciate you guys coming by. Give me some of your extremely valuable time. I do know how important it is to you. If you are in a position to help the channel to grow, you can use the donate link. Check us out on Patreon. See what we offer to you through Teespring. Or, of course, hit the join button right here on YouTube. Become a channel member while you're at it. Hit the subscribe button. Stick around. Have some fun with us here on the channel. And don't forget, man, that somehow, some way, each and every single day, you right there, you do make a difference. And I look forward, baby, to the next time that you and I get together to have another visit, either in the live streams on Thursday nights at the stop-motion premieres or the old-fashioned way, baby, right here inside the videos.